Today we will be talking about the fungi kingdom. You will need your protus and fungi flipbook and we will begin on tab 1 which is the kingdom's overview. You will record the following information in that tab as I go through it. So for the fungus kingdom the cell type is eukaryote which means it has a nucleus. Okay? Most fungi are multicellular. There are some unicellular fungi such as yeast. They are heterotrophs. That means they make their that means they cannot make their own food and that they must eat other organisms for food. They do have cell walls. Their cell walls are, are made of chitin. And some examples of fungi are mushrooms, yeast, and mold. We will now move to tab 2 in your foldable, which is the fungi notes. And you will follow along in the PowerPoint and fill in your foldable. So the first thing that you are going to fill in is the word mycology, which is the study of fungi. So it's just a fancier name of saying that. So as we talked about a little bit earlier, kingdom fungi, the, the cells are eukaryotic cells. That means they have a nucleus. Kingdom fungi organisms are non-modal or sessile, which means they cannot move. They are heterotrophic absorb absorptive feeders, which means that they cannot make their own food and that they do feed through absorption. Funguses can be decomposers, which means they live off of dead organic matter, or they can be parasitics, primarily to plants, where they feed off of the plants. They do not have chlorophyll and are not photosynthetic. Most of them are multicellular except for yeast, as we said before, and fungi are classified by their type of spore. Just to kind of go through the fungi structure, there are three main components. So the first is the hyphae, which is the branching tubes or filaments which make it up. The next part is the mycelium, which is a mass of that hyphae. Okay? And then you have the fruiting body. This is the actual visible structure that helps with reproduction and helps um, spread and produce the spores. So as you can see, this is a bread mold example of fungal reproduction. So you can see that there is both asexual and sexual reproduction happening in this situation. So when spores are used, it is asexual, and then when gametes are used, it is sexual. The first phylum that we will talk about is the zygomycota, or the terrestrial mold phylum. And bread mold would be an example of an organism in this phylum. The next one is actually a class. So this is class Oomycota, which is a type of water mold. Okay, And an example of this is from the Irish potato famine when um, the potatoes in Ireland were infected with this fungi and it ruined a lot of their crops and led to a lot of uh, famine in that country at that time. So. This one is class Oomycota. The next phylum is Basidiomycota, and this is your club fungi. Okay, These are your bracket and shell fungi, and they're usually very beautiful looking, at least to me. You can see the nice beautiful colors on the images on your slide. A few other examples of this are corn smut and wheat rust. So if you look, the picture on the left is an example of corn smut, which affects corn plants. And then the picture on the right shows wheat rust, which, if you look at it, kind of looks like the wheat is rusting, but in reality, it's the fungus on the wheat. All right, here are some examples of some mushrooms that are considered deadly. Um, my best tip to you would be to eat mushrooms that you buy at the grocery store because you know that they are going to be safe. I'm not the best one to pick out mushrooms out in the wild and know if they are safe or not, so your best bet is to eat the mushrooms from the grocery store. The next phylum we will look at is Ascomycota, and this is your sac fungi. One of the main examples of this is actually truffles. So there are black and white truffles, and I'm not talking about you know your Oreo truffles or your chocolate truffles, but truffles are an actual fungi. They're actually quite expensive. They can go from uh, you know between 100 to 200 dollars an ounce for these truffles, and they are a delicacy. And it's because they are rare; they're only found in the wild. Um, and if you go to a nice, very, very fancy restaurant, you could probably get um, some sort of dish with truffle oil or truffle sprinkles or things like that. Um, so just something for you to look out for. It is a fungus. 
Athlete's foot and ringworm are also examples of fungus in this phylum. So athlete's foot, as you can see on the image on the left, um, will eventually lead to a little bit of stinky feet. And then on the right, ringworm. Now ringworm is actually a fungus. I know the word implies that it may be an animal, but it's actually because of the way it looks that it was named ringworm. The next thing to talk about is sudden oak death. So if you look at these images, and particularly these images, um, the image that you see on the screen, you can see that this forest was full of trees, and then over time the trees started to die. Um, and this is actually, sudden oak death is actually a disease caused by the fungus um, called Phythora remorum, and it actually infects trees and leads to their death. And so you can see the impact it's had on just this forest. And then again, you can see um, in this images as well. All right, the next phylum we've got is the mycophycophyta, which is your lichens. So you actually have probably seen lichens and may not have realized that it's fungus. But when you look at tree bark, it's usually the white kind of chalky looking thing on tree bark, and that's actually lichen. Okay. And you can kind of see it takes on different colors. In the image on the left, you can see it's kind of like a whitish, greenish color. All right, and the last little bit that we're going to start going towards the end is mycorrhizae, and this is actually a symbiotic fungi that works with plant roots, okay, and it helps with water and nutrition absorption. So you can see in the image on the right that when you have this mycorrhizae, it helps the plants grow um, because it helps them absorb water and nutrition, and then without it, they don't grow as tall. So it's a mutualistic relationship. And then the last phylum we will look at is Myxomycota, which is your slime molds. And these are actually fungus like protists, okay? So they move like protozoa, but they reproduce like fungi. So they are slime molds, okay? But they are fungus like protists. Now you're going to sketch the following images in the Fungi Questions and Sketches tab of your foldable. So that is this tab number four. So I will go through the images, but you're welcome to pause the video and sketch them or pull up the PowerPoint on your screen and sketch them and then answer your questions. So the first image that you will sketch is the mushroom. Okay. The next image that you will sketch is the bread mold. Okay. And then go ahead and answer your questions in the fungi questions and sketches tab of refillable. Goodbye.